Again, Jim, thank you very much for taking us through your paper. Um, we have about 10 minutes now in which any questions that uh, delegates or convention members want to put to Jim, we can accommodate. Yvonne, again. And again, could you introduce yourself again? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Yvonne Carney, and I'd just like to make a point that gay, pe gay and lesbian people arrive from heterosexual parents. It's when the mo there was something I saw a number of years ago, but I couldn't uh, follow it up for this, that it's when the child is in the womb with the mother, she, it's something in her genetics that causes gayness. That causes homosexually, what? Homosexually, homosexual. Maybe Professor Shane can help me. Uh, okay. Is, is the question, is the, can you hear me? Yeah, but people is the question don't see, something they like. think these gay people come from nowhere and it's right. heterosexual parents yeah. that produce them. Yeah, and and you're wondering really, is there is there any evidence to suggest that uh, the determination of sexual orientation yes, is actually there was down at the a level of? I you know, I I think the evidence is really still out on that question. Is it? Yeah, and I think that that's there's good. still what <laughs> that's good. Because the okay. mothers get lamp for well, everything. You know, <laughs> there's there's plenty plenty of theories, plenty of contest. But I think a lot of researchers in the area would remain, would suggest that there's a lot of mystery associated with the way people arrive in the world and the way yeah. they become either heterosexual or homosexual or, or bisexual. Yeah. You know? And who knows, maybe there are some questions that research won't get to the center of. Maybe, but we don't. So that's. that's There is a lot of problems with children and with parents from heterosexual mm -hmm. marriages, but so far we've never heard of any of gays mis mistreating their children. Maybe they do, mm -hmm. I don't know, but we've never heard it. They do, they do. Some of the, some yeah. of the yeah. research suggests that there's really no difference in the level of uh, abuse, neglect or maltreatment. Uh, no, just the it same. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple yeah. of other people. Yeah. One okay. group is, is heavenly. Thank you very much for that. Is. And uh, I just said, because we are so short of time before our coffee break, there's two people that, if I can, I, yeah, firstly yourself, and then could you again, could you uh, introduce Coram, got, uh, I'm Barry McElduff, and my question is effectively to Professor Sheehan. Um, does the available evidence effectively suggest that? Really, the only negative impact on the children of same-sex parents is the discrimination that they suffer on the basis of parental sexual orientation. Could, could I take that next question as well? Because we, we might have to bundle questions. Um, could, I, could I just say... Uh, again, name, please. Jim Darcy, sorry. Uh, the, the speaker before last said children come from heterosexual couples, but the fact is that uh, most g gay people are, are married and have children, uh, uh, or traditionally that would be the case, that a lot of gay people would have been married and have children. Having children is, is not, uh, is not there's, there's no complete correlation between gay, being gay or, or lesbian and not having children. Uh, the second thing I'd say is, at this early stage, I would like to say that my default position would be that I think it's very little to ask for, uh, by anybody to have the same civil rights as anyone else in a modern society. So I would, I, I would like okay. to just say those couple. Okay, I mean, I, w I really want to insist at this stage that if 
people, we want questions at this point. I mean, I think you'll have all the opportunities now to express views in the roundtable discussions. I want to take two more que two more comments, th those that I saw, because I, 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 and then we're going to have to stop. You, you first, and then Avril, yes, okay. Again, name please. Hi, I'm David O'Reilly. Um, thanks very much, Jim, for a very informative no, paper. No. I was just wondering, um, you mentioned uh, peer, peer review. I was just with reference to Patterson's paper, just wondering what the peer review was um, around that. If you could give us a brief outline of what, what other people thought of um, Patterson's paper. The, the Patterson oh, sorry, again, J Jim, sorry, I want yes, one sure, last question, sure. then can you answer them all at the same time? Avril, please, uh, again, introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Sheehan, for your presentation. I know I certainly found it very interesting that you said that despite the fact that Obviously, there isn't that much research yet. It is moving in the one direction. Um, and I, th I thought that was the part that stuck with me, certainly from your presentation. I suppose just to ask you a question in your professional capacity, one of the things that I think is most frightening in Irish society today is the level of suicide amongst young people and mental health problems amongst young people. And I know that amongst gay teenagers, it's four, the rate of suicide is four times that of their peers. I, think, I just wanted to ask you if you think that one of the reasons why gay teens find it so hard to come to terms with their sexuality is because they worry that they won't be able to grow up, fall in love and marry the same way uh, as their friends and they see that there are certain emotional um, opportunities in life that are closed off them. If you think that that's part of the picture um, as to why we have such a bad problem in this country with suicide amongst gay teens. Thank you. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I did say I was closing the questions at that stage, at this stage. I mean, there will be opportunities to ask people back. Now, Jim, could you try to provide a composite answer, please? Uh, absolutely. And I think there's a number, number of questions. I want to come to the first one first. Uh, the, the, the question of whether the research really leads in this, in this direction, suggesting that it's really stigma and discrimination that's really the responsible element for any differences or any negative differential between children raised in same-sex unions and heterosexual parents. Uh, I don't think that, there's, uh, that there is actually evidence for that yet, but, but can I say this much, that, that even in this space of time uh, following the 2005-06 Patterson evaluation and now, the, there have been a number of other uh, more national, better samples with better representation of populations. And so the research is actually improving qualitatively. And one of the things that you see when you get these bigger studies is you do see a much more differentiated picture. And you see a picture where, yes, you know, there are some difficulties. We can't say that all the, all the picture is good, you know, in relation to lesbian and gay parenting. But the problem really is that when we move into these much larger studies, there are some advantages to that. But one of the things that gets hidden a bit is the very element that you're talking about. You actually bring into those larger studies the element of stigma uh, and social isolation and the element, of, uh, the element of living without legal sanction for adult relationship and parent-child relationship becomes bigger. And those big studies are particularly poor at being able to handle that question. So I think you're putting your finger then on, there on something that's absolutely critical. And I want to move to the fourth question now and to say that in my experience over 40 years working with young people, uh, adolescents and young adults and so on, uh, the issue about mental health and propensity to suicide and mental health problems there's no doubt that among adolescents and very young adults, the question of being able to marry or not to survive in a society and live and stay alive has been critical, right? It's only later, it's only later in late 20s and early, early 30s that those questions become really critical for people because people have maybe have a career party developed and so on and they're trying to think how can I uh, how can I manage my lifestyle how can I imagine manage my desire for parenthood and so on and of course in my experience over 40 years and I've lived through the different decades from the 70s right up to now thankfully not as many people feel they have to leave the country but in the 1970s and 80s 
the number of young people and young adults who I saw who felt it intolerable to live in Ireland, felt they could not stay alive in Ireland, was very significant. As I was speaking the more this morning, one particular man came to my mind who was in his 20s, who was in working in the bank. This is in the late 70s. He came to me looking to get a referral to somebody who would remove that part of his brain that was making him homosexual. And thankfully, he couldn't find somebody who, who, who would do it, right? But of course, the history was that there were, you know, there were historical circumstances where that happened. Uh, so we have moved quite a long way. But I think that in, in studying this topic, we have to remember something about all of the studies. We're studying a group of people who have been significantly subjected to significant discrimination and stigma over a long period of time. That means that on the inside of family units, there's a, a level of suffering often that psychotherapists see that isn't as obvious. Because back in the 70s and 80s, these families and family-like units were simply not visible. And the visibility aspect of them has become much more, much more significant. I want to go to the final question. It's not, I hope I'm not missing somebody, but the question about the Patterson paper. The Patterson paper was part of a process within the American Psychological Association that had an extraordinary number of checks and balances within it. And simply it would not have been allowed out of the APA as official APA launching policy, as it were, without an enormous number of internal checks and balances. It didn't actually uh, achieve the normal peer review process, but it actually achieved a peer review process that was far more extensive than that. Yeah. Jim, thank you very much. I'm really conscious that I know other people wanted to ask questions, and I'm very sorry I couldn't accommodate them, but there will be an opportunity to have access to Jim and the other experts in, during the roundtable discussion.